What's up, gang? Welcome back to Redux Visions, where it's about keeping the Mediaverse connected from past to present and the mainstream to the obscure. Yo. Today, we're taking an investigative look at one of the most unique video games and pieces of cyberpunk I've experienced in recent years. A game that manages to overwhelm the senses with energy, attitude, and more than anything else, style. It's the 2017 cyberpunk isometric run and gun twin stick shooter, Ruiner. If that description seemed like a mouthful, it's because it was, and it still doesn't really scratch the surface in terms of describing what kind of game Ruiner is, and that's one of the many reasons I wanted to make a document of about this violent and oh-so-red cyberpunk tour de force. Another is that we've explored well-established studios like Squaresoft and Konami in the past, but Rikon Games provides our first chance to explore the development process for a studio's debut title. And on our odyssey through the world of Ruiner, we'll gain a better understanding of its talented creators, the inspirations that drove them, and their creative process in bringing this oppressive, dystopic playground of destruction to life. We'll also dive into the aesthetic and gameplay intricacies that make Ruiner such a special entry, not in just the video game realm, but the cyberpunk universe as a whole. While the vast majority of this video is based on articles and research, it wouldn't be a Redux Vision stock without some of my own whim of a madman speculative insights as well. The whim of a madman. <laughs> I like that. But anyways, let's mosey. Now if you've played the game, hopefully this video will do it justice for your experience as well, and if you haven't played it, I hope you'll download or get your hands on a copy as soon as this video is over. Now whether this intro made you nod or shrug, get ready to hack the planet and then watch it burn into a cyberpunk haze of red. This is also your warning for partial spoilers for the game and a number of shared similarity works. Don't worry though, if you haven't experienced these titles, this video won't be a ruiner. There's no better place for us to start than the founding of Rikon Games, which took place in 2014 and was spearheaded by four seasoned game developers, Kuba Stolinski, Magda Tomkowitz, Marek Rofler, and Machik Mach. Stolinski acted as the tie that binds between them all as he previously worked with Rofler and Mach at CDPR on the Witcher games before working at Techland Games on the titles Dead Island and Dying Light where he would meet Tomkowitz. Talent-wise, this is a stacked group that was ready to forge their own path in the gaming industry, and a 2017 Culture Vulture interview with Tomkowitz gives a window into the thoughts and purpose that went into starting Rikon Games. She states, It started during one of the then-regular game developers' beer meetings. We were bitching about how it sucks to work for the big companies, of course. It was then that we had the aha moment. Okay, so let's do something ourselves finally. They embarked on their own personal creative journey, but there was one more team member yet to join whose vision would completely shape the look, direction, and development of Ruiner, and it was yet another former CDPR staff member, artist and graphic designer Benedict Snyder, whose work you should certainly be familiar with as he created the typeface for The Witcher and Cyberpunk 2077 that people have aesthetically fallen in love with since. Essentially, that's what he was going to be bringing to the table. Some kick-ass visual aesthetics and marketing experience.
Snyder was initially going to do the graphic design work, concept art, logos, and create promotional material. But after working closely with the Rikon team for about half a year, it was decided that Snyder's visual concepts would be the driving force of the project, and he would become much more involved in Ruiner, taking the role of creative director. And as past documents of have shown, game development job titles mean different things depending on the project and company. In this case, creative director pretty much meant director, period, and that Snyder would have a hand in a little bit of everything. From working on narrative design with Tomkowitz to the game design with Stalinsky, Rofler, and Mock. And of course, the art and marketing Snyder did himself. I mean, it is what he was there to do in the first place. From the outset, Snyder felt that Ruiner's biggest issue, though, wouldn't be creating a fun, unique game, but rather getting it noticed among the thousands of other games released yearly. This is why it was decided the development of Ruiner would be based on what Snyder termed bold, marketable visuals. And for lack of a better term, the artwork for Ruiner is fucking awesome. It's raw and brutal while still being stylishly slick and I absolutely love it. In Snyder's eye-catching style of art, fortunately was not lost in translation, but the devs doing a fantastic job of rendering his visions in game, staying very true to the conceptual pieces. The fact that assets were decided upon early in development made things run smoother despite it all being an iterative process, but it also meant that the marketed look of the game would be true to the finished product, which we know is not always the case these days. Obviously we're going to address Ruiner's look throughout this video because how can you not? But let's examine one of the major aspects of this dev cycle that would become the glue holding all this style together. The comic book style storytelling fits well with the semi-cartoon style graphics of the world. And as you should already know from the previous Max Payne and John Wick Hex projects whose stories were presented in similar fashion, I love comics and video games, and if you can find a sleek way to merge the two, I'm all for it. But even the story comes secondary to the mood of Ruiner's world and its colorful cast. Snyder stating that many of the influences for the mood and world building stem from some of their favorite childhood cyberpunk, which he details in this quote. We pursued directions that felt natural to us since we all like more or less similar stuff, ranging from badass don't give a fuck anime like Cyberpunk Oedo to Carpenter movies and French sci-fi comic books. Probably more focused on the energy, the drive they gave us than anything else like trying to grab the essence of what made those appeal to us more than some direct reference. It's more about the vibe than some predictable future nonsense. That's probably the best way to put it because there's not a clear inspiration I can pinpoint for Ruiner, which is probably one of the best compliments a game can get these days because it means it's clearly become its own thing, and that even the tropey cyberpunk aspects are done in new ways I haven't seen before. This again is in part due to the comic book style that Tomkowitz described. Ruiner does give you a straightforward objective based plot to keep you moving forward and motivated, but the bulk of its narrative surrounds its dirty, vibrant hub world of Rencock and the various inhabitants of its to live and die lifestyle. Cat girl hooligans, busty smugglers, and disgruntled bounty hunters. They're all here, with most of them wanting to give you side quests to complete during your mainline missions, saying, hey, dogman bitch boy, go grab this thing I need because I told you to and because PlayStation trophy. But the town is also abuzz with random chat from NPCs usually regarding the end results of you rampaging through the Corpo Industrial Complex. There's even little lore tidbits about enemies you encounter along your journey just to give them some contextual background to the world. Ruiner's streamlined story and world building work to its favor because it keeps the scope narrowed. You don't have a plethora of twists and convoluted backstory that begs to be addressed. It's an excellent use of lore and calculated open-endedness. But it's also a world with hidden little details, like the fact the name Renkok was derived from the Japanese word Rengoku, which stands for purgatory, fitting perfectly with the other environments of heaven and hell in this game. 
Now I'm not here to spoil the story for you because while it serves as backdrop for the violent carnage of the gameplay, it is still very intriguing, with just enough mystery to keep you motivated to find out what's going on. Personally, I like the story and think it's a nice bonus on top of a game already brimming with energy, style, and attitude. And energy might be the best word to take us into our next arena of the gauntlet. Mood and emotion mixing with the gameplay is heavily reliant on narrative motivations, but an amazing soundtrack can sometimes do an even better job of evoking an attitude and energy that propels you forward, as is the case with Ruiner's OST, because holy shit, your adrenaline may reach so high while listening to this soundtrack you will feel the urge to punch someone in the face, in a good way. This OST was curated to perfection by the Rikon team and is a total international affair, including artists like Japanese composer Susuma Hirasawa, whose song Recall took Rikon over a year to acquire the rights to, UK artists Sidewalks and Skeletons, and Polish artist Zemilska, whose works make up the bulk of the brutal, industrial, strangely haunting, yet melancholic sound of Ruiner. And rounding out the musical talent is Orion GmbH, who created the ambient background music specifically for the game. I have no info about Orion, and when I IMDB'd them, I was met with one of the most obscure page of credits I've ever seen. I can only assume that this is not the same person, and if it is, I'm really curious about what was going on during those 37 years in between projects. You can feel that every song in Ruiner was chosen with purpose. Tense, energetic tracks for action, balanced with melancholic, laid-back tunes for the catch-your-breath moments. It's been awesome to learn of so many amazing artists through this OST, and I've been listening to it non-stop of late. If you'd like to get in on the auditory vibes of Ruiner, I've linked the OST playlist in the video description for you. Speaking of vibes, though, it's a word we've brought up a few times, but haven't quite addressed and it was a tough thing to pin down, but after a week of indulging in some dark, violent cyberpunk media, I think I found a way to describe not just Ruiner's vibe, but a subgenre of cyberpunk that's produced some of my favorite works past and present. Dread Red is a type of cyberpunk I feel is built on, guess to a degree, the color red, but more so the extreme themes and moods the color evokes, like power, danger, desire, anger, and of course, dread. Early examples of the aesthetic reside in 80s and 90s don't give a fuck violent cyberpunk anime in movies like Akira, Cyberpunk Oedo, Ghost in the Shell, Genocyber, Terminator, Robocop, and of course, my personal favorite, Angel Cop. Sayonara, asshole. These are works in which the nihilistic brutality of their world is on full display in extreme viscera. Works so dark that even children don't get plot armor in them. In recent years, we've seen this aesthetic make appearances in the form of live action titles like Dread. Possessor, Upgrade, and Mr. Robot, which of course play more with the color palette to convey mood, but the brutal mayhem and carnage is still in all these fictional universes, and Ruiner fits perfectly into this subset with its own dark violent world of corruption, ulterior motives, and really cool hard industrial music. Oh, and of course, lots of fucking red. It's interesting that each title mentioned in this section managed to change the cyberpunk landscape in their own rights. While there will always be tropes and cliches that permeate the genre, it doesn't preclude people from doing something new with it. 
And that may be what I appreciate most about the Dread Red genre, the over-the-top, in-your-face violence and innovative ways these works spin their tales. It's not so much common plot devices that any of these share. As stated before, it's a vibe, and one that I'm always happy to see new media emerge from. Sadly, the Dread Red subgenre is not overflowing with the content, but what's out there is awesome, and I've left a list of these titles in the description for you if you'd like to check any of them out. Like with most great things, we can only hope that unique works like these spark and inspire more to come in the future, but now that we've looked at the intangible aspects of Ruiner that make it such a stylish affair, it's time we wrap up the development part of things and get down to the nuts and bolts of what makes Ruiner so damn fun. Now development would end up being a two year process with the game impressing eyes everywhere it was shown. And if there were any concerns about if Ruiner would be a fun balls to the walls action game, look no further than its publisher, Devolver Digital whose track record already included Hotline Miami, Duke Nukem 3D, and the Serious Sam franchise. And with the marketing literally being the first thing done in development, all that was left was the release. And it would be on September 26, 2017 that Rykon Games would let Puppy off his leash to rip and tear through the video game realm. Thirst for blood! Oh yeah, thirst for blood, bring it! With Devolver Digital being the publisher, it's easy to call Ruiner a cyberpunk hotline Miami, which, to be honest, I feel the only thing they share is the twin-stick shooter element. But if there's one game I do feel Ruiner shares a go-fuck-yourself spirit with, it's Doom. <laughs> shares a place with the carnage-fueled FPS as a perfect blend of in-your-face music accompanying the bone-crushing, skull-smashing action taking place on screen that features a masked badass Chad who will eviscerate anyone in their path. In Ruiner's case, extra brutal fatalities come in the form of what the game terms Ruiner Kills, a mechanic you can enact when your opponents are stunned shown by the yellow ring. Ruiner kills not only give you badass slow-mo animations, but also extra loot drops and health replenishments, so you're certainly encouraged to indulge the spinal cord obliterating spectacle and watch the myriad of kill animations. The fights in this game are an adrenaline-fueled frenzy, but there's rarely a point that you will feel super overwhelmed because not only do you get some heavy-powered equipment, but there is actual strategy to this game around every corner. You cannot approach every enemy like you're the goddamn Terminator because you will get murked. There's a number of different enemy types from kamikaze bots and techno zombies to corpo mercs and high powered predator esque cyborgs. And there are different approaches to each battle arena. Bosses are no different, each requiring pattern recognition and weakness exploitation. But it doesn't change the fact that you have so many enemies with varied skill sets. So how do you deal with this variety of perpetrators in your path? Well, this is where Ruiner gets fancy on your ass, because we do have the standard RPG skill tree with multiple shield upgrades and offensive power-ups, but unlike most games where you're locked in and confined to how you've distributed your points along the way, Ruiner allows you to switch your skills on the fly, being able to unequip from slots and use points in a different attribute area. There's multiple times throughout the game that this comes in handy, but it's a pivotal mechanic toward being the game on normal, speedrun, or hard. Perfect example is a fight late in the game that I've seen on forums be called unfair by players, and some said that this section killed the game for them. What did Rykon do? They responded and encouraged them that they could finish the game and told them to play with the skill sets. And as someone who had reached the same point and banged their head in frustration until I conceded to playing on easy the first time, I took that encouragement, went back, and beat Ruiner on normal. And then again on speedrun. But I haven't tackled it on hard difficulty yet. But that alone should speak to Ruiner's addictiveness and replayability. 
you'll want to play this game first for the story and side quests, and then just to try every weapon in the game, improve your speedrun time, and continue wreaking havoc in heaven. It's the kind of game that challenges you enough that it's not a cakewalk, but it doesn't dive into Dark Souls break your controller frustration. It's perfect, difficult, and fun enough to keep you coming back. Whether you're down for the hack and slash or the run and gun, Ruiner's got both. But this whole game is operating at S tier status. Anyways, there's not much left to say without being the Ruiner of Ruiner. And so that brings us to the conclusion. Well gang, we survived our odyssey through the Dread Red Ruiner experience, attempted to define the undefinable with its aesthetics, and looked at the inner workings of what makes it such a head-bobbing, hypnotic buffet of mayhem that makes the player a Terminator Chad on par with the Doom Slayer. Even though Ruiner was well received by critics, I still feel it's not as appreciated as it should be. I hope we do see a Ruiner sequel or at least more efforts with this kind of edge and attitude. And that's honestly another reason I wanted to make this document of. To show appreciation for the love that went into creating this studio, the talent and ideas that these people brought to the table and decided to share with the world, and to shine a light on a group of individuals that made something not because they were asked to, but simply because they just wanted to. Passionate creativity is something that should always be acknowledged, especially something as well put together as Ruiner. My final verdict for Ruiner, if you couldn't tell already, is a red as fuck, 10 out of 10. But thank you for watching guys, I hope this video was informative and entertaining. But if you'll excuse me, I think after this project, I need to go detoxify from the color red for a bit. Stay steezy, I'll see you on the next, but thanks for watching The Document of Ruiner.